All right, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Gianluca De Martini from the University of Queensland, and I'm going to present you today a joint work with uh, my colleagues in uh, Italy from Udine and Rome. Uh, so this work is about information retrieval evaluation and specifically preference judgments. Let me explain you what we mean with this. So traditionally to evaluate information retrieval systems, we need to collect the relevant judgments from human assessors. And how this traditionally looks like is that we show a topic and a document to a human uh, uh, assessor. And then we ask them to judge the relevance of the document to the topic, for example, on a binary scale, relevant, not relevant. This scale may be, uh, may have more than two levels, can have multiple dimensions, and so on. But a more recent uh, approach to collect relevance judgments is uh, preference judgments. And this looks like this. Rather than showing a single document and a topic to the human assessor, we are showing the topic and two documents to the human assessor. And the assessor is to select which of the two documents, A or B, is more relevant to the topic as compared to the other. These are preference judgments. So the, the advantage of this uh, is that uh, it's uh, allegedly easier for human assessors to make a judgments between A being better than B rather than absolute judgment of how much relevant document A may be to the topic. The disadvantage of this is that if we need to consider all possible pairs of documents in a document collection, then we need to do very many preference judgments. And that's uh, the problem we are addressing in this paper. So let's go back to traditional relevance judgments where, where we have a single document. Even in that case, we have very many documents to judge. And the solution for that problem has been pooling. So pooling means uh, we are going to judge the relevance of documents that have been retrieved by at least one retrieval system in the top K results. So we have, for example, a fixed depth pooling of K, and we are only judging documents retrieved in the top K by systems. Now, what does that idea of pooling mean if we do preference judgments? So again, we cannot really judge all possible pairs in, the, in a collection, how should we do pooling for preference judgments? So this is how it looks like, right? Instead of judging the entire document collection times again, the document collection, all possible pairs in the docu document collection, we could define a value K, which is our size of the pool. And we only judge documents retrieved in the top K by systems again. If we do this and we do preference judgments, we have three possible cases that neither of the two documents in the pair of documents we are judging has been retrieved in the top K documents, all of these ones, or one of the two has been retrieved by, in, by a system in the top K. So for example, uh, document I is in the top K, but document J is not, or both of them have been retrieved in the top K. So we argue that uh, the first case is not very interesting. We could assume both I and J are not relevant, and this is what is done in traditional pooling. Also, case two is not very interesting because one is uh, likely to be more relevant than the other. So we could infer a preference by how the systems rank the documents. The ones which are interesting are these cases in which both I and J are in the top K in at least. Uh, for at least one system. So we focus on this case, and by doing this, we reduce a, a size of the collection square number of pairs to still something like K square uh, number of pairs, which may be prohibitive uh, in, in certain cases. So let's look at, at the traditional case. Even if we set K, so a pool depth of 100, we are only judging the top 100 documents, 50 topics, 75 runs, which is average in a track evaluation setting. We are judging half a billion pairs, which is uh, too much. 
So what we are looking at is comparing, and we have done experiments to compare strategies to order document pairs to be judged. So we can stop when our uh, judging budget is uh, exhausted. We start from the top of this order list of document pairs. We judge, judge, judge. And when we need to stop, we stop. And we see how good uh, um, our results are. So that's what we do in this paper. Now, step-by-step, step, all in one slide, we talked about pooling, we talked about pooling for document pairs, we talk about a budget, which is the number of document pairs we can afford to assess. After we have done this uh, uh, budget definition, what we need is to uh, compute some scores for documents and based, that, uh, based on those scores, scores for document pairs so that we can sort document pairs to judge first. An example way to scoring documents based on how they have been retrieved by systems is their average rank across systems or board account or uh, uh, rank fusion approaches that have been proposed previously that will attach a score to a document based on how systems have ranked them for the topic. Based on that, we compute scores for pairs, we define our budget, so we restrict ourselves on a number of document pairs, we collect preference judgments where we will have information about document A being more relevant than document B, and then once we have these uh, preferences, if we want to compute uh, standard evaluation measures and evaluate our systems, we need to have a way to linearize these preference judgments. So going from pairs to QRLs to single scale, single document relevance judgments. And here we have a, a number of options to do that. And finally, once we have uh, single document relevance judgments, we can compute measures like mean average precision or NDCG, and finally compare the evaluation results obtained in this way using preference judgment and a specific uh, strategy to sort the document pairs and, and a specific budget as compared to a traditional, uh, the evaluation result obtained with traditional methods uh, such as uh, uh, single document relevant judgments. Okay, so we look at all these different steps experimentally. I will summarize a few of the key findings from our experiments. Our experiments were run on four different data sets. Uh, one is uh, 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 binary judgments from trained assessors, and the other three are using crowdsource relevant judgments. Two of them are on a single scale with multiple levels. And the last one is a native preference judgment data sets uh, by Young uh, et al. in 2018. So the first question is, which pairs uh, should we judge, right? If we have a, a fixed budget, which are the pairs uh, we should judge? And uh, again, out of many experiments, the conclusion here is that if our budget is low, so we can only judge a few document pairs. It's, in, it's uh, valuable to use pairs that are composed of documents which are one after the other in the ranked list of documents. So for example, the pairs we want to judge is document ranked first versus second, second versus third, third versus fourth, and so on, which are the similar in a way from a relevance point of view, so a human judgment there is, is more beneficial. If we have a higher budget, then we can look at all possible pairs like first versus second, first versus third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Also, if we try to do one versus second, third, fourth, fifth, if we have a low budget, this will give very bad uh, evaluation results, which are not reliable. It's also very valuable to build pairs which are across systems. So document ranked first by one system compared to a document ranked first by another system. That's also uh, bring a lot of information to the evaluation result. Now, once we selected the pairs, how do we sort them? How, what do we do first? 
And uh, here are some methods that work well are uh, reciprocal rank fusion. So this really means uh, uh, giving a score to a document based on the position in the rank given by the system. Uh, and this will be the reciprocal of the rank. So we do one divided by the position in the rank and that's the score of the document. Uh, if our budget is very low, we see that this orange line gives evaluation results more similar to traditional evaluation results. For this low budget, uh, number of reference judgments we can do, uh, Borda is uh, a preferred way to score documents. And this is defined as the pool depth minus the position in the rank. So not the reciprocal, but just the, the, the linear uh, allocation of scores to documents. So you see when the budget uh, increases, then uh, this uh, reciprocal rank fusion gets better. But for low budget, Borda is a bit better. And again, here on the y-axis, we have uh, correlation of evaluation on the final evaluation results of the system ranking as compared to the system ranking obtained with the original judgments, which are single documents. The next question was, once we have preference judgments, how do we generate QRLs? How do we linearize the pairs and have a single document relevance judgment out of it? And here, what seems to work well is a probabilistic method that uh, works under this assumption. So it's computing a score for a document, a score SI for document I, uh, based on this probability. So if our preference judgment says that I is uh, more relevant than J, then that relation should uh, uh, hold in the way we allocate scores to documents. This strategy appears to uh, lead to more similar results to traditional evaluation results with single document judgments. And finally, what we do is uh, uh, do this uh, Kendall Tau correlation. So we compare how, our, how IR systems evaluated with uh, preference judgments and these approaches compared to uh, IR system ranking evaluated when using uh, uh, the classic pointwise single document judgments. And here you see, uh, there are many such plots in the paper, but if you look at some of these, you see that first the correlation is reasonably high. We get the Kendall Tau values around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, comparing the tradition, the original IR system ranking and the IR system ranking obtained with uh, uh, the different combinations of our approaches. What you also see, the second observation you can make here is that at the top of the ranking of systems, so for the best systems, the most effective systems, there is some, some issue there in several cases. So apparently when doing preference judgments in this way, the best systems are a bit, uh, under uh, evaluated, right? Their evaluation is a bit uh, um, not, uh, not uh, well represented. So there is a bit of confusion on the best systems, which may be uh, problematic. But overall, you see a good correlation of uh, the best staying with the best and the worst uh, staying the worst. Okay, so in summary, in this paper, we looked at the uh, preference judgments. We've seen which uh, pairs are better to be judged in order to get consistent evaluation results. And these strategies may be different based on the budget of judgments available. If the number of judgments we can do is very low, then uh, we should select pairs in a certain way. But if we have a larger budget, we can afford to select pairs in different ways. Um, if we consider all possible pairs, but our budget is low, this will give not reliable evaluation results. And when we transform preference judgments into pointwise judgments, this probabilistic model appears to be the best choice among the ones we consider. So in conclusion, the key observation of this paper is that 
Uh, preference judgment is an interesting alternative to pointwise judgment. It comes with the problem that uh, we need to judge too many pairs. So deciding which pairs we judge is critical and may one choice or another may lead to reliable evaluation results or unreliable evaluation results. Thank you very much. Um, very nice talk, and thank you very much. Any question from the floor? There is a question by Avishak in the chat. Uh, can I can I ask the question? Go ahead. All right. Very nice talk, Gianluca. It was very good. Uh, one question was about you made this observation that yes, uh, yes. Please go ahead. All right, so you made this observation that uh, judging closely ranked documents result uh, in better assessments, right? Or, or uh, you know, better results. But uh, it might be larger time consuming things because they're very close and could be higher, longer to judge than uh, when you're assessing two documents which are far apart, right? Um, in other sense, do you consider uh, time as a budgetary experiment? I see that you've taken K as the budget, right? Yeah, no, very, very good point, Avishek. Uh, we did not consider the effort of the assessors involved in the pairwise judgment, but I agree with you, right? If you show a highly ranked and a lowly ranked document, it may be very easy to make the preference, but those are also the, the, prefer the pairs uh, we can easily discard, right? Because they are in somehow easy and we could infer that preference from the system ranking even whether uh, uh, you could infer other judgments from the judgments you have is, is another question. So I think to answer your point, we, we intentionally select, want to select difficult judgments to make, right? Because those are the ones uh, that bring more value to the evaluation. So the assumptions under which we work are we have a budget which is fixed and we try to make the best out of this budget of how many preference judgments we can collect. But because of that, they will be difficult to make probably and will take long. It's a good point to look at the time it takes to judge as well. Fair enough, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions uh, from the floor? Uh, I have a very short question. Uh, may I ask? Sure. Yes. Uh, have you ever considered any um, robustness uh, issues in this uh, research? Robustness in the sense of uh, generalization across data set or something else? Yes, because you you take the uh, you take the, the information source from the crowd, right? Oh, At I the see. same time, you're gonna consider the budget. Uh, so the the budget can be many different uh, meaning. I mean, in, in general sense, can be money, can be time, can be other uh, even um, knowledge quality. So um, uh, maybe you you already in your your your, your wish list in the new future. So I would like to see well, your you view on these uh, robust issues, because when we take the public or crowdsourcing kind of information, it's very important for us to balance the, the, the quality and the reliability and, 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 and of course, uh, 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 retrieval or recommendation result. So, so, so have you ever <laughs> considered this? Maybe, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm not the few. Uh, I'm not in the no, field. I see, so, I see your uh, point. I see your yeah. point. Yeah, it's a yeah, very good yeah. point. Yes, uh, yes. Um, yeah. And it's, it's whether the, the judgments are reliable and it's a question of quality of the yes. results we collect, yes. which is yes. very important. Yes. Uh, so yes. I think that's an orthogonal yes. problem, right? Uh, whenever we do crowdsourcing yes. data collection, the quality of the data we collect is always uh, the first question. And there is a number of strategies to, to improve yep. the quality and check for quality that we can deploy uh, orthogonally to how many labels we can collect. 
Thanks, thanks. Yes, by the way, uh, what will be, you think in terms of uh, robustness will be the first priority sub-direction? Are you, are you uh, think the most priority uh, in, in, in the high priority will be uh, information quality or budget? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I hope I make myself clear. Yes, when yeah, you yeah, take no. the, yeah. Quality yeah. is always yeah. uh, the first concern, in my opinion. First country. So okay. we can always, uh, uh, we always do something about quality. For example, we can use uh, mm. um, known uh, judgments or trustworthy judgments and check whether the crowd agrees with those, right? If you know the document uh, A yes. is better than B, we ask them and we check whether they agree with that or not. If they do, then we trust the other judgments that they are making. If not, we discard those and we collect them again. And this will improve quality and then we can focus on budget. But obviously, the noisier the data, the more expensive it will be to collect because we are collecting them again if noisy. Mm 